Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the Inside Spurs channel. Happy Wednesday morning. Hope you're well, hope you're looking after yourself and you're looking forward to a good day today. Whatever you're up to, enjoy it, make the most of it. We, I tell you what, this, this, um, there's one of these stories I'm going to talk about that's been floating around a little bit and I've been kind of waiting to see just a little bit more substance towards it. So we're going to be talking apparently around Spurs not only wanting one Juventus player, but two Juventus players. Very interesting. Just want to say, if you're new, subscribe. You're very much welcome to join us for the journey. And we're going to jump straight in on this double raid of Juventus. So first of all, I saw it from Team Talk who put out that Tottenham are plotting a double January raid on Juventus with Samuel Illing Jr. reportedly set to be joined by Matthias Suli in a €45 million Euro deal. The move sparks memories of another double raid on Juventus for Bentecourt and Kulisevsky. I just want to say, slightly disrespectful to Bentecourt and Kulisevsky. They played a lot of football for Juventus before they got sold. These two boys, not so much. Um. Obviously, we, we, we know about, we know about obviously, the, the interest in Samuel Ealing Jr. I think that's been well documented over probably the last month, to be honest. It's something that doesn't seem to go away. It's not something that shocks anyone. On Matthias Suli, or Sule, or I'm not too sure I say his last name, but let's call him Suli for, for now. It's something that I've seen floated around the last sort of, I'd say a few days. Yeah, I'd say a few days. And I think actually, that's an exciting player. And I'll talk to you <clears throat> I'll talk to you about why I think he's an exciting player. Stats, figures, all that jazz. But firstly, to really give you a bit more a little bit more spice, as Chris Eubank would say. And it said it came from uh, Fabio Santini who said that Spurs want to sign Matthias Suli next month and Juventus are keen to sell the player to raise funds for their own additions. Juventus are demanding twenty five million euros for him, right? So Forty-five. If you if we compare that to the team talk um, article, forty-five million euros for the both, twenty-five million for Suli. I think. I mean, that works out to about thirty-eight million pounds, right? I think you get them cheaper. Matthias the Suli maybe might be twenty-five million euros, but I think you can get the both of them done for about forty million euros. Just think a little bit cheaper, you know, thirty-two million, something like that. Let's talk a little bit about Matthias Sule, okay? So he currently is on loan at Frosinone in the Serie A. Having a really good season, by the way. Uh, but on him, the player himself, um, Matthias Sule Malvano. Oh, you know me, I love a good name. I, the, the better the name, the better the player. Let's just call it that. Unreal name. Uh, born April, 5th, April 15th, 2000. So he's 20 years old, 21 by the start of next season. Argentine, I'm expecting probably to be an Argentine international and no doubt in some time soon. Uh, his main position is on the right wing with a left foot. Uh, contract expires in the summer of twenty, sorry, of, of 2026. I'm looking at the wrong one. His contract expires at Frosinone in 2024 because he's on loan. So yeah, he's got a few years left on his deal. This season though, and I will tell you where Frosinone are in the league table in a minute. But this season, he's played 14 games, one of them being in the Italian Cup. He scored six and assisting seven, which has all came in the league. So in 13 games, he's got seven goal contributions, which for a 20-year-old in a, in, a, in a team that maybe, you know, aren't, aren't the best, right? They're not, you don't look at Frosinone as being the best team in the league. I mean, they're 12th in the league at the moment. Um, they are seven points clear of the relegation zone. He's a player that's been touted as like the next big Dybala. That's kind of how they've touted him. Now, he plays on the right wing, so I wouldn't say he's an out-and-out Dybala. From what I've watched of him, he's got zero issues with running at players. He's not He's not like... It's, the way I describe him, he's not the quickest, but he's quick enough, if you know what I mean. Like, when you look at... Who's a good comparison? I think he's quicker than Kulisevsky. I'd probably say he's like... He's got a bit of that Brian Hill acceleration where you, you can get off the mark fairly quickly. But it gives me sort of like the Man or Solomon kind of quickness. Like over a short space, you know, you can get ahead of a defender. Uses his body really well. One thing I noticed when he was dribbling was that he, if he does get by a defender, he knows he gets his body right in front of him. So he can't, you know, the defender can't get back to him. 
main position being the right wing, but he does also sometimes play more centrally in, in an attacking midfielder or even a second striker, right? Which I think, again, versatility that Kulisewski offers you in that kind of role, it's nice that you can still have another guy there, right? I was really impressed by him. I really was impressed by him. And I think, I think people look, people... People are very, very much adamant that, you know, like a, uh, Brennan Johnson is a right winger. Now, I think he's a better right winger than he is a left winger, but you can develop him to be a better left winger. That's for sure. People, you know, trying to cram Kulisewski into the midfield by then going, ah, oh, him and Madison will play in the midfield. No, they can't. Madison and him won't play in midfield. They won't play in midfield together. Madison is the number one guy as the 10 or the eight that plays into the 10 role. Um Kulisewski be a right winger, so you, you'll be looking at whoever's going to battle him for a right wing. And by the looks of it, Johnson's left winger. Now, obviously not in the last game, because injuries, Kulisewski has to go into the midfield, Johnson goes out to the right, Sonny goes out left, and Richardson goes to the centre. Good Lord, that's a lot of changes when you think about it. And just, just, wow, okay. Just bring one player in, everyone has to move once. It's not Richardson's fault, by the way, I know. Don't, not saying that. And if he scores two goals every game, I'll be happy for him to always play up there, up front. I don't care. But on those two, you've got two wingers that you, you're basically looking to grab there, right? Potentially that sorts your winger situation for the time being, potentially. If one of them hits, if one of them does really, really well, you're flying. You know, it, it, not every player that you sign is going to be obviously fantastic. But if you can get one of the two that you sign for the winger position to do really, really well, you're flying. You know, um, you know, it, 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 wing is a difficult one, I think. You know, with a, with a centre-half or full-back, you can kind of spot the good ones fairly quickly. A winger, I just find it's a bit difficult. Like, strikers think it's a bit difficult because the hardest thing in the game is to score a goal. You know? Um, but, you know, when you, when you think about it, those two coming in, does that mean an attacker leaves? I, I think Perisic might sort of be let go to how you split. I still think I can kind of see that in January. I just got a feeling that Brian Hill's time might be up. And it's not so that I want that to happen. I just think if you bring in two wingers, part of me thinks, yeah, that, that might be a situation that you have to let one go. Now, you lost Perisic, fair enough. That's You're replacing a Perisic, if you know what I mean. And we do need to replace Perisic because... We haven't had them all year, and I tell you what, in those last five games where, you know, we drew City, we drew City, we lost to Villa, we lost to West Ham, all those games, right? He'd have made a massive impact on those games, and we would have probably would have won or two, one or two of them. We definitely would have beaten West Ham. I think we would have beaten Villa tonight. So I didn't think Villa were that good against us. I think Villa have been better recently than they were against us, though. Um, but no, I think you need to replace him. But then it's a situation of. Well, unless the other one is to replace Sonny, but the Sonny will be coming back. I don't know. I'm, 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 unless they think Kulisevsky is now a midfielder. I, I, it's one of those weird ones. I just don't know why the two. But I'm excited by both. More so Matthias Sule, in my opinion. But I like the idea that Illing Jr., homegrown, all those things that come into their play, especially next season. Why not? But anyway, guys, this is in the video. I hope you did enjoy it. Drop a like on the video if you did. Hit me in the comment section your thoughts and feelings about Matthias Sule, Samuel Illing Jr., 45 million euros, would you take that deal? If not, why not? Or if not that money, how much money would you send? Subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit the bell notification for more. But anyway, guys, this is the end of the video. I'll see you all very, very soon. Take care, guys.